I had uh, given some thought when I heard Mike Huckabee, who is somewhat away from the political spectrum where I find myself comfortable, when he talked about a fair tax. And it occurred to me that if we could have a graduated income tax in this country, we could certainly have a graduated sales tax. What is the benefit of a graduated sales tax? Well, first of all, everybody has to buy. Every single day, we are buying everything from staples to luxury. And if we have a graduated sales tax, it in effect forces every consumer, number one, to pay a tax. Number two, to pay it consistent with their ability and need for the product that they are buying so that those things which the lowest of our class structure requires should perhaps have a negative tax. Those things that are luxuries that those of us would like to have should have a higher tax. And by doing so, we, number one, are able to regulate our economy much more efficiently simply by manipulating those tax rates. But in addition to that, we ensure that everyone participates to the degree that they should. And in addition to that, I suggest that a savings rate, which is historically the lowest in the world, would begin to rise as people put their money aside until they need the very items that they choose to buy or desire the items that they choose to buy at some time in the future. And savings rates are the things that drive the fundamental health of our economy. We have a problem in our banking institutions as we are all too painfully aware, partly because the capitalization of our banking system, which used to be predicated upon personal savings, is now being predicated on products that banks are able to sell, charges that they are able to pass on. For those of you who have uh, overdrafted a check, uh, when you think back to those thrilling days of yesteryear when it was $5 at most, it's now $25 or $30. And banks are making more money on their credit cards and their overdraft charges than they ever made on the investments that people made in CDs and savings accounts. So what I am suggesting is that if we are going to be competitive, because we have a intellectual engine in this country that is far superior to any other country in the world. We have the ability and have demonstrated the commitment to innovate, to expand the horizon, to change, to grow, to see things in ways that others do not, and to take that, translate it into products and technologies, and export those products and technologies all over the world. If we can then see ourselves as the intellectual engine that drives the world economy, we have the opportunity to remain not simply competitive, but indispensable to an economy throughout the world that is struggling with simply meeting the needs of its people without great leaps forward in innovation and technology. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. I'll stay here as long as they'll let me and as long as my voice holds out. My question is, are, have we entered a declining phase in our civilization, whereas if we don't do some of the corrections, uh, we will be like past civilizations and fade or an, to be replaced by another civilization, or I, maybe end. I, I believe that we have. I believe that, and perhaps it's my own bias, but I, I happen to think that the zenith 
of American civilization was probably 1960 to 1965. Of course, those were, it's a good time to be alive when you were my age. But in any event, if you look at the technological advances of the 60s, they are truly, truly monumental. We had the fastest airplane in the world. We had the Apollo mission. We had a growth in science and technology flowering in every single field of endeavor from pharmaceuticals to uh, technology. We have, if you look at the last 10 years, virtually dried up in terms of technological advances. We have taken the possibilities for stem cell research and put them on the back burner. It, it is a sad but true statistic that Nintendo spent more on research and development than the United States spent on education in one year. Mm -hmm.